Are you in the market for a used RV and worried you're about to drop a ton of dough only to find out that you bought a lemon? I totally understand. That was me honestly just a couple months ago. I just recently bought my first RV and it ended up being a 1998 Fleetwood Flair. So I thought today, I would walk you through, as a certified tech, what I looked for when buying an RV. My name is Emily Kistler. I'm a certified RV repair tech based in Las Vegas, and this is RV Repair Woman. First of all, I'll say, if it is in your budget to get your RV professionally inspected, I highly recommend you do so. You can go to the rvtaa.org website and find a certified inspector near you. Certified inspectors are going to go through your rig from tip to tail with a fine tooth comb. They're gonna check the fluids if it's a motor home. They're gonna check every appliance, all the seals. They're going to find anything that could possibly be wrong with this rig so you know exactly what you're buying. Do not trust the PDI, the pre-delivery inspection that a dealership says they are doing. That's a cover their butt inspection. And if you have the money, I would recommend purchasing a save your butt inspection. I've heard so many stories of things not getting caught in those PDIs. So if it's in your budget, get it professionally inspected. Think about it, if you were buying a house, which is what you're doing, you're buying a house on wheels, you would have to get it inspected before you bought it. So everyone was on the same page about what it was that was being bought and sold. And the cost of some RVs are getting up there to the costs of houses. Really consider it, it could save your butt in the long run. But I'll be really upfront, I didn't get my rig professionally inspected before I bought it. I was looking to buy a rig for under 10K so it just really wasn't in my budget to get the rig professionally inspected. And I'm also a certified tech and was able to do a poor man's inspection that I just had to trust would be good enough. So if a full blown inspection is not in the budget for you, here's a walkthrough of what I did to my rig before I bought it so I could feel comfortable about what I was paying for. Number one, the first thing I did on this rig was test it for a propane leak. I have a whole video that walks you through how to do this with a manometer. Almost anything else in an RV can be fixed. It might just cost a crap ton of money. If your AC is bad, it can be replaced. If your fridge is bad, it can be replaced. There is a potential, if you have an older rig where rust is an issue, that if it has a propane leak, it cannot be fixed. Propane leaks are a RV repair tech's nightmare. They can be incredibly difficult to impossible to track down. And the cost to find one if you have it can be astronomical. So my number one tip when buying an RV is make sure you do a propane leak test on it. I personally would never spend money on a rig that had a propane leak. So if you are inspecting a rig on your own, please check out my video where I walk you through how to do a time pressure drop test with a manometer to test if your rig has a propane leak. Number two, we're gonna talk about the exterior of the RV. If you were to poll text what their red flags are when buying an RV, I think number one would be that propane leak and right behind it at number two would be major roof issues. So what you're gonna do when you're inspecting your roof is go walk on it. If it is a load supporting roof, basically if there's a ladder on the back, it means you can probably walk around on the roof. If it says super light on the side, I would be a little nervous. I honestly, my personal opinion, wouldn't spend money on a super light rig. RVs already have so little structure to them that in order to be super light, we have removed even more structure. So already I'm a little iffy on any of the super lights, but if the roof is made to be walked on, walk on it. Walk on every inch of that roof. I'm talking heel toe it. 
do a DUI test along the whole thing. You're looking for any soft spots, any place where water has gotten in and damaged the roof. If your roof is spongy, that means water has gotten in and that repair bill could be really high. So if you start seeing spongy spots, we're gonna start getting really concerned. We're also keeping an eye out for large tears or dents in the roof. Small things we can cover up with a turn -a bond relatively easy. When we get into larger things, the bigger it gets, the more likely that we're gonna have to replace the roof and that's thousands of dollars. So we really wanna look out for problems with the roof. While we're up there, let's take a look at the Dicor. Dicor is the product that we use around anywhere where we needed to make a hole in the roof. I'm talking for any of the fans, a skylight, any screw should have Dicor around it. That Dicor has to be updated and replaced regularly, more often in places like here in Las Vegas where it gets really hot and really sunny. Dicor is relatively easy to replace. It just takes time and money. That's something that most able-bodied people can do, and I can make a video showing you how to do it, but just know what you're getting yourself into. If the dye car all looks beautiful and smooth, you're probably good. If it's getting really cracked and dry and it's black in a lot of places, just know that you're gonna have a big day long project and you know, probably $200 worth of dye core that you're gonna need to do after you've purchased it. So these are just things to keep in mind. So to summarize on the roof, we are heel towing it along, looking for any soft spots. If we see a soft spot, we're probably looking at saying no to this rig. We're looking at tears and dents. If we see anything of significant size, larger than you'd wanna do a small patch on, then we're probably gonna say no to this rig. And then we're going to look at the die core. We're just looking at how old it is. If it's in good quality, cool, that's a bonus in the pro column for this RV. If it is really old and cracking, just know that there's a chance that there's water damage underneath and know that we have a project on our hands after we've purchased it. So there's the roof. Continuing along outside, we're gonna shimmy our way down the ladder and do a lap around. We're looking at all of the seals around the RV. Are any of the trim pieces trying to come off of the RV? If so, is it just that a screw was never put in because my parents had a trim piece try to fall off and it was just that it was literally missing screws or is it because of water damage and the wood has rotted through and there's nothing for the screw to grab? We're really looking for water damage. That's the big scary thing when it comes to RVs. RVs already have a very limited structure. So once we start adding water damage, we're losing some of the structural integrity of the rig. And that's not only scary safety wise, it's also just a really big money investment. So water damage, the big thing that we're looking out for. While you're there as well, if you're able-bodied, get under the rig and look for signs of rust. Rust not only means that we've lost some structural integrity, but it also means troubleshooting things in the future is going to be more difficult. Connections might be rusted shut, we can't undo them. We might end up having to replace larger sections of things simply because we can't take out just the part that we need. We're gonna start raising some more eyebrows, the more rust we see. And then on the slides, I didn't have slides on the rig that I bought, but if you are looking at one that does, take a real close look at the bulb seals. That's the seal that goes around the whole RV. It's gonna be like a flap that comes out as it goes out and it's gonna flap in as the slide comes in. That seal is the only thing keeping water out. So we really want that thing to be in one piece. Look for tears, look for major cracks. If it's a 30 year old rig, it's gonna have some surface cracking. It might just be a little old and we can put some conditioner on it. But if it's got major tears, just know that that is where water can get in and not only are you not gonna be watertight, that's how air gets out. Your air conditioner is going to have to work much harder because more of that cold air is going to be leaking out of the rig. Your furnace is gonna to have to work harder in the winter because all the warm air is going to be leaking out. Be nervous about cut and cracked bulb seals. They can also, depending on the seal type, be a project to replace because you think you just have a small tear on one side and you find out that you have to replace the entire seal, like all three sides. 
in order to fix that one rip properly. So as a wrap up for the exterior, we're gonna look at the roof. We're mostly looking for signs of water damage. We're gonna do a lap around the entire exterior, looking for signs of water damage. Signs of water damage are anything spongy, rust, and anything trying to fall off. And then if we have seals, we're taking a real close look at that bulb seal that goes around the whole slide and making sure that that is in good condition. That's my quick and dirty inspection for the exterior. Now let's head inside. Appliances. Most appliances are replaceable if they're not working, but you do want to know when you buy the rig whether or not the appliances work. And this is a place where a lot of people get really screwed on PDIs, pre-delivery inspections that dealers do. Things like the AC. You want to turn that sucker on and make sure that it not only moves air, but the air gets cold. Very often in PDIs, they will just confirm that the fan turned on and they won't confirm that it actually blows cold air. An air conditioner that just has a fan and doesn't blow cold is just a very expensive fan. So my tip for air conditioners, make sure that they're actually blowing cold air. For the fridge, ideally, if you had enough forethought, ask the current owner or the dealer or whoever currently has this rig to turn on the fridge 24 hours before you show up. Absorption style RV fridges take a long time to get to temperature. And so if they can turn it on the day before, we can at least prove that it's trying to get cold. If you can't, like for instance, I jumped on the listing for the RV that I bought within an hour of them putting it up. So there was not time for them to turn on the fridge and see if it worked. What we can do on a fridge is do a really quick see, smell, hear test to see if it has a leak. You're gonna open up the lower access panel and you're going to look for a neon liquid, you're going to smell for ammonia, and you're going to listen for a gurgling noise. If you have any of those, then that is a sign that the fridge has a refrigerant leak in it. That is not fixable. If you do have a leak, you either need to replace the cooling unit in the fridge or the entire fridge itself. That is expensive and that is something you should know before you purchase the RV. You can also turn the fridge on either on propane or electric, whatever's available to you, wherever you're looking at this rig, and just see there should be a tube on the right hand side of that access panel. Wait a minute or two, see if that gets hot. That's at least telling you that we are heating that up. Fridges make cold from heat. I know it's like magic, but making sure that that tube actually gets hot means at least we have a chance that the fridge is going to cool down. And that's about the best I can do for you without pulling out a multimeter. For the water heater, turn it on on propane, wait about 20 minutes, see if you actually get hot water. And for the furnace, make sure that it turns on and actually blows hot air. That was the basics of what I did to check the appliances in my rig before I bought it. While you're walking around, take a good look at the ceiling for any discoloration. That is again going to be a sign of water damage and water damage is one of our biggest fears. And then some just general electrical things. Do the lights turn on? How old is the battery? They usually have a sticker on them that'll tell you the month and year that the battery was manufactured. Lead acid batteries. You really only get a couple of years out of lead acid batteries, even less here in the Las Vegas heat. So when I bought my rig, I knew that the batteries in it were from 2016. And so the fact that I bought it in 2023 meant those batteries were 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, seven years old. I was pretty confident those batteries were gonna have to be replaced relatively soon. Wasn't a big deal, but it was an expense that I knew I was gonna have to make pretty soon after buying the rig. So batteries, even at the very low end, are gonna cost you 100 to 200 bucks a piece. So another big expense that you might have right off the bat after buying the rig. So you want to know that before you sign on the dotted line. And then number five is an optional one. If your rig has a generator, here's a tip that I actually stole from Rigger RV Repair. He's got a really awesome channel, go check him out. He recommends looking at the generator and how many hours it has on it. When it comes to used RVs, you're looking for something that wasn't generally used a ton. People living full time in an RV just give it a 
beating man. You're looking for something that was used as little as possible, so it just took less of a beating across its lifetime. His tip is to look at the hours logged on the generator. If you see really high hours, hundreds of hours on that generator, that probably means that rig was used a ton. The inverse is not necessarily true. Low hours on the generator may mean that it wasn't used a ton, or it could mean that it was a rig that was just plugged into power most of the time. But if you do see high hours on the generator, it probably means that that rig was used a lot. And for the most part, that's the quick and dirty of it all. When it comes to doing a poor man's inspection on an RV, you're really looking at water damage, how much hard use did this RV get, and do the appliances work? Those were the main things that I looked for as a certified tech when buying a used RV, and that was the basic inspection that I did. Once you do buy your rig, if you would like to learn how to maintain it, so that way you can enjoy your RV for as long as possible, check out my free Ultimate Guide to RV Maintenance. Link is in the description. I walk you through with step-by-step -step guides on how to maintain everything from your ACs to your fresh water tanks to your furnace. I got it all. Truly the number one way to save money on RV repairs and avoid having to call a tech like me is giving your RV a little bit of love and that guide walks you through how to do it. And if you would just like RV repair, maintenance and tips dropped into your subscription box every week, go ahead and hit subscribe because I put out a new video like this every week. This has been RV Repair Woman. You got this.